Hi guys, Ron here and welcome to the workshop. There have been a lot of requests uh, from you, the viewers, about my training or when will I do uh, training related videos. And at first I tried to shy away from it because you know I'm not really a professional coach, I'm not certainly not a professional level rider. But then I had the thought about it and looked at uh, how uh, wrong do people take uh, some aspects of cycling uh, and considering that I got relatively far in a relatively short time I decided to give it a go so my first video before I talk about any training or whatever uh, I want to talk about motivation and how do you uh, how do you basically ha uh, gather or uh, get motivated to do the training and do the work uh, because well no matter what I tell you about training and what I do it won't work for you if you don't have the motivation or the willpower to do it so I think this is the part uh, where people fail the most often uh, and I'm going to talk about or divide it into three kind of key aspects that I think that help me when uh, well with my cycling in general so the first one uh, it's pretty obvious uh, it's a psychological fact that uh, if you set some kind of goals uh, in whatever you want to do you're going to perform better and achieve them sooner so when you're a beginner or a professional you need goals you know you need uh, something to drive you towards a new power record a new KOM a race result or just you know some uh, amount of time or kilometers distance whatever ridden in a certain period whatever you just need to have a specific goal with a specified time a specified event when and how are you going to achieve that and plan accordingly of course it needs to be ambitious but realistic but I, I'm sure you all heard about this so I'm not going to talk about this anymore but it's true it, it helps uh, the second thing I want to talk about uh, is variety. A lot of people I've seen uh, do the same routes all over again, the same training schedules all over again, the same interval, the same type of training, and then eventually they burn out, even though they're not training too much. Uh, so how do you avoid this? Well, there are just simple things, you know, uh, even if you only do one discipline uh, that, that are going to help you. So, for example, in road riding, you can notice on my Strava account, I very rarely do rides that are there and back. And I find that it's always better for motivation to go, you know, uh, a loop or a circle in some way. In a race either you not you rarely have a race unless it's a time shot that's just there and back and I think it has some psychological benefits as well and also by riding you're basically riding double the amount of road uh, and obstacles in in the same amount of time so you're not going doing the same thing all over again and that that just seems to help also don't ride the same amount uh, of, of roads or the same roads all over again even if you're doing it in a loop I live in a well not a very important not a very busy and quite a rural area but still we have a lot of high high quality uh, roads with with low traffic and I'm pretty sure that in most regions I'm not going to say all of them but in most regions you can really find these remote uh, remote roads <clears throat> that are definitely going to be good uh, for training it's safer it's better for the morale 
and it's, it's just more fun. Uh, usually when I train I never go more than 40 to 50 k's away from home but I still can I th think if we loop together all of the training routes connecting all the villages that I used that I normally ride I think you can easily make a 300 kilometer route in a 50 kilometer circle so it's also good for safety you know and in case you have a mechanical etc you don't have that uh, range anxiety I would say if, if you're always close to home but you can still still loop around some nice uh, nice routes so that's that's one thing then another thing about variety of course if you have a means if you have means to do different disciplines or different kinds of events that's also going to really help with your focus really help with your progress as a cyclist as well you become more rounded and it's more fun uh, this year I've been doing four different types of races in in a varying schedule so I always always had some new motivation to prepare for different kind of events let's say this week I did road specific road race specific training then I did time trial specific training then uh, then mountain bike specific training and then now that cyclocross sometimes I do just general fitness training and then cyclocross training in particular so that's also uh, a good way to mix things up and some people uh, are afraid that you know what if I don't do well uh, at one of these disciplines well it's no problem I when I first tried cyclocross I sucked at it when I first tried road racing, I sucked at it. When I first tried time trolling, I sucked at it. Same in the mountain biking. So, you know, you have to do the things all over and over and over again to, to improve no matter what, what it is. And no one actually got better by doing something else or not doing something. So, yeah, don't be afraid of failure. Just, just go for it and try different things. And in the end, you start improving you'll see progress and that just aids your motivation uh, and the biggest thing about that is well the motivation has to come from the inside and if you plant these seeds that I'm talking about right now you're never going to have a problem uh, making yourself to train or, or go out on a ride whatever you just have to make it fun and ride and also talking about the third important aspect that I want to talk about today and that's progress tracking because no matter how motivated you are if you can't objectively quantify your improvements then your motivation will disappear and I see this with uh, old school riders that you know don't use power meters and they uh, keep uh, saying trash like you know I feel I'm I'm doing well today I'm I'm not feeling I'm doing I can't feel I'm doing well this season or whatever it's just bullshit you know if you have the numbers there they're they're absolute you know if the numbers are good you know you're doing well and the things you're doing are working and if not then you need to change something and if you don't have that reliable measure of progress and progress tracking that's afforded by a power meter Yes, be prepared. Uh, in this video series, I'm going to talk about power uh, a lot, but that's just how it is. You know, you can't ignore it. That this day and age, cycling is about power. No matter which discipline uh, you're uh, you're looking at, except from the very very extreme ends of the scale and very very skill-oriented ones, then. You know you're always using on a bicycle you're always using your legs to propel yourself and if you don't have the power you're not going to go very fast no matter if you're doing it on dirt on, on sand on tarmac whatever cobbles anything so yeah power it's the absolute and most objective way of measuring your performance you know you can do as many uh, courses and times and heart rate and it's all bullshit you know it you'd never get a real 
uh, comparable and quantifiable objective uh, way of tracking your progress if you don't have a power meter. So that's very important of course and you're not wasting your time not knowing what you do. You know if you go to the gym the weights are labeled you know how many reps of what have you done you know it's not just mm, I like this red one I lifted up 10 times and now I feel good you know it's, it's just like that with, when you're not riding with the power meter uh, and also I really find I'm not sponsored by Strava or anything but I think it's an excellent addition uh, to the power meter firstly because of the metrics it's not as advanced as training peaks but if you don't have a coach then it has most of the features that you're going to need so the performance anal analytic tools uh, you're going to need those if you want to take it seriously and they are all there and secondly it's a very neat uh, way to actually track as I said progress tracking to track everything everything you do and compare it to previous periods plan for the next period also fun stuff like chasing KOMs you know uh, it's uh, it adds the fun factor in it adds the variety factor and it adds the progress tracking factor so if you're not in Strava I de definitely recommend uh, getting up there okay so I think this pretty much sums up the three things that you need to focus on in order to be uh, motivated for the training and then if you like this uh, type of videos I'll continue on with the series and talk more about specific training and how do I do what I do and why do I do what I do and of course all of my rides and training uh, data is public on Strava so of course uh, you can check that out as well okay so that's all for today thanks for watching and see you next time